Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on this little segment gear that goes in a Monarch 10 E uh, round dial type uh, lathe, Monarch lathe, and this is for a piece that goes in the electronic lead screw reverser mechanism on that early round dial type uh, machine. Now, previously, I've already gone in here, I have machined some stock, I have uh, turned some radiuses on it, and we're to the point that we're ready to cut the gear teeth in this. And to do that, we're going to be using our Kearney Trekker Model 3H horizontal milling machine with a dividing head. Uh, we're going to set it up to do a gear cutting job, and that's what we're about to do. So come join the fun and uh, watch us cut some gears. So the first step here is going to be setting up the arbor with the correct involute cutter to cut the gear profile that we need for cutting these teeth. Now an involute gear cutter is a cutter that is in the shape of the inside of that gear tooth that needs to be cut out and removed. Uh, I've got the right cutter sitting over here. The machine is currently set up for cutting a different gear so we need to swap out our arbor, put in the correct, um, correct uh, cutter here and get all that set up. So we're going to start out by removing this uh, previous set up, I'll uh, we'll start by loosening this bolt. I say this every time because it's really important, but you always want to loosen a bolt on your arbors with the outboard arbor support in place. If you don't, if that's tight and you take this off first, you can get a lot of leverage going on. You can actually bend this arbor where it's not running true. So I'll just loosen that up. Next step up here is uh, we will, actually I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to uh, loosen up these, these just lock the overarm support. And I will run that arbor support out. Now I'll come over here and we'll remove the arbor support off the front. There's a nut up here on the top that tightens that up and this should just slide right off. I'm going to retract these over arms just out of my way for the moment. And we'll go ahead and break this arbor down now so that I can put all this stuff up. Let me grab a rag. This is just a bearing that runs in that arbor support. We got some bushings on here, spacers. I'm going to take this involute cutter out. We'll just put the spacers back on the, the arbor for safekeeping. I'll go ahead and put the uh, bearing back on there for safekeeping and we'll just loosely put that screw on there to kind of hold it all in place and we'll put this involute cutter back up in my cabinet so we'll have it next time. This is a 10 pitch number six cutter. I am going to remove this whole arbor off of here because uh, this one I think is a one inch arbor. I need a seven eighths inch arbor. I think is what it is that fits that other cutter. So it is a different arbor altogether. So we're going to go ahead and pull it out. There is a uh, there's a draw bar that goes through the machine. When I say draw bar, all it is is a threaded rod that goes to a nut on the back side back here that. When you tighten it up, it just draws this uh, arbor into the machine so that it's uh, nice and tight. There we go. And there we go. We'll pull that one out. There's just a bolt, a long threaded rod that goes into this. There's a threaded rod that comes out the back of the machine. There's a nut on there. When you tighten it up, it draws this uh, 50 taper up into the socket and holds the arbor in place. This is the correct arbor to go in here, and I'll start by just wiping this 50 taper socket and our spindle and wipe out in there. Make sure we have no chips or dirt or dust. We want a good seat in there. Insert that arbor in place, and I'll tighten up the drawbar. And there we go. We have a new arbor in place. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the nut off of this one. Pull the bearing off. And I'll just pull some of the spacers out of here. We'll go about right there. Cutting a much finer, smaller pitch uh, gear this time. So my cutter is much smaller than the previous one. but. It'll get the job done. That is uh, 
in place. I want to cut where it's cutting toward the dividing head so I have it placed in there in that direction. And now we'll put some spacers back on here. Put our bearing support there. I'm moving my bearing support in a little bit from the very end. Uh, it just isn't quite as long, so I don't need all that room in there. And the closer you get the bearing support to the machine, the more rigid it is. So that's the reason for kind of scooting it up a little bit. And we will just hand tighten our nut. Again, I don't want to tighten it right now because if I do, I'm putting all this leverage on the shaft and it'll easily bend. So we'll put the arbor support in place first. Run the uh, overarm supports back out. Here we go, put the overarm support back on. Tighten it up on the top. We'll go ahead and put some oil on there. I, I like to put the uh, overarm support on the top two and then pull it up onto the bearing rather than trying to uh, get all three of those to slide up at one time. It just, it works better. It's much easier to get it lined up on these two than trying to get it lined up on all three at the same time. And now I can uh, tighten up my nut on the end here, get that good and tight. And we'll tighten up these uh, nuts on the top, which will just keep this uh, overarm support from coming in and out. It'll just lock it in place. There we go, our arbor is set up. Just a little tighter shot there. You can see it's a very small cutter. This is a, a 24th, a 24 pitch. Uh, so very much smaller uh, gear than what I'm usually cutting on this machine. And, uh, but we can cut whatever size we need. We just get the right arbor and right cutter. So these are my blanks. And like I said, we've already previously got these machined to the proper radius and everything. And I made a arbor to hold these while I was turning them. We're going to just turn them or we're going to cut these gears just right here on the same arbor uh, that we had previously used. So uh, I'm going to tighten this up in the chuck. I need to uh, bring this foot stock in and it's loose. Uh, from my last job, but I'm going to bring it in where it needs to go and we'll tighten these up. This foot stock just gives some support. I have a center in the end of that shaft and this will support it on the end. Uh, loosen that up and get that in there good and tight and we'll tighten that back up again. Okay, so now we've got support uh, holding that on both ends and we're ready to center that cutter up. Hopefully you can see the profile of this uh, involute cutter and that matches the uh, profile of the teeth that we're going to cut here uh, very precisely. And uh, what I want to do now is I need to get this centered up onto the park. So we got an arc here and we want to get the center of this cutter right on the highest part of that. And to do this, I use a kind of a little of a, a, a hack instead of measuring or anything like that. Basically what we're going to do is we're just going to move our part back and forth until it barely touches the very high there. And uh, once we got to get a little mark on there, that's going to mark the, uh, the, the very center of the height highest point on this part. And uh, we'll just use the cutter to do that. And then we can just eyeball it, line the cutter up on that mark and we'll be more than close enough uh, for this particular job. So uh, there we go, there's our cutter turning. I'm gonna have to figure out my feeds and speeds. Uh, I'll do that in a little bit, but this will be fine for right now. 
What I want to do is bring my table up slowly here. I am going to get a little flashlight out. I apologize if I'm blowing me out with light there. But this is a very fine, okay, I'm touching right now, right there. It's barely touching. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move my part back and forth across there. And what that's going to do is when I do that, it's going to find, it's going to mark a high spot right on the top. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. All right, I can, eat, I can see that very easily now. And uh, what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna line that cutter up on that mark, which just looks like it's right there. One thing I need to make an adjustment on here, I noticed while I was running that, that this bearing is a little bit tight. I can feel it, it's gotten warm to the touch. I mean, I can touch it, but it's warm. And I heard it squealing a little bit in there. There's a bronze bearing uh, that goes in here. It's a bushing, a, a straight bushing, but it's, it's in a, this casting is tapered and that, that bronze piece is tapered. It's split and there's a nut on the end here. And by loosening and tightening this nut, you can adjust the diameter of that but that bushing. So we need to actually loosen it up just a, a probably just a notch or two here and that'll hopefully make that run just a little bit looser and not be getting so hot. Let me make that adjustment. So I'm going to loosen this uh, nut right here, our screw. It's just a screw that goes in there. If you notice this uh, ring behind it, it's just a threaded ring but it's got notches in there and those notches line up with that, this uh, screw and that's what you use to align it. It keeps it from turning. Let me get a spanner wrench to rotate that with a little bit. There's my spanner wrench. You see it's got a little tab in there and see, we need to loosen this up. So I'm gonna put that in a hole. Here we go. So we'll put this spanner wrench in one of these holes and I'm going to loosen that up until it's, I can just kind of freely turn it. All right, I like that better, I think. Let me uh, get that lined up with that screw there a little bit better. I think that'll go in now. All right, that should have loosened that bearing up just enough. Hopefully it'll run without getting hot. So next step is, is we need to put the right plate in here and get the dividing head set up so that we're making 78 divisions per revolution. So I've got a little cheat sheet here. This is the manual for my dividing head. And it tells me that to do that, I need the, the plate that has a, a circle of holes with 39 holes in a circle, evenly spaced. And for 78 teeth, we do 20 holes in a 38 or 39 hole pattern rather. So we need to change this out. I have got uh, this plate here, this circle, the second circle in is the 39 circle pattern. So we need to change our plate out. And so we'll pull this apart. First thing we'll do is remove our handle here. It just slides right off. There's a, uh, little retaining screw here on the bottom of the clip that holds the uh, sector in, the dividing sector to little help you get the right number of holes. We'll pull that out. We'll loosen this ring up on the outside. There's now three screws here that holds that plate in place. We'll remove those.
All right, now let's, uh, there we go. Get that plate out of there. And we will replace it with this plate. Let's get our holes lined back up here. And put our screws back in. There, it's lined up now. All right, make sure all those are tight. Tighten that ring back up. Put our sector back on here. Now I'm gonna loosen up this piece. We get it into the right pin. So we'll just There we go. Okay. Just making sure it's engaging in the pins all the way around. And it is. And we will now adjust that for 20 uh, holes. Now there's a little screw over here. I'm going to loosen up. I will put that one on the pin up top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count 20 holes. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 18, 19, 20 right there. And we'll pull this back piece around to that. And that's just a little cheat to help you uh, get things lined up each time so that you can uh, easily find your 20 holes without having to manually count them out every time. So let me come back around to where we were. That's where we're starting from. And I'm just going to confirm that I got 20 holes. One, two, three, 19, 20. And there we go. So what we'll do is when we're coming around each time I'll pull out and I will go until it comes to that little spacer that we put in. We can then slide this around, go to the next one. And that way I can easily count off my 20 holes for each tooth. Okay. So let's talk speeds and feeds. Uh, we've got a high speed steel cutter. We're cutting soft cast iron. Uh, according to, I got a little feed and speed calculator here that I'll use to, to do this math. Uh, you can find these online. There's actually apps you can put on your phone that'll calculate the same thing. Uh, according to this, for soft cast iron, my cutter speed should be between 100 and 120 feet per minute. So that's the, the speed of the outside diameter. Now I've measured the diameter of this cutter. It's an inch and three quarter. And I can use my little calculator here. Let me see, I'm gonna put in my cutter diameter. All right, I put in my cutter diameter at an inch and a quarter right here. My surface speed that I'm shooting for is between 100 and 120. So it's reading right here that my RPMs need to be about 250 RPMs. Now I've looked over here on my machine and the closest one I've got is 214 RPMs or 276. I'm gonna be on the conservative side. I'm gonna go with 214 RPMs. It's gonna be close to what it calculates out. Now, the next thing we need to look at is our feed rate. And again, we can, I can look over here and it tells me for cast iron that we should be making between 10 and 30 thousandths uh, feed per tooth. So every cut, every tooth on here should be cutting between um, a, a 10 thousandths and 30 thousandths of an inch. So again, we'll come in here. I counted that. I got 14 uh, teeth. I can, I know my RPM is about 214. So I'm going to match up 14 and roughly 214 about right there. 
My feed rate is, let's just say 0.2, which is right between that 0.1 and 0.3. It says six inches per minute is the ideal feed rate. And again, I'm gonna be a little bit conservative. We're gonna go with four and a half inches per minute. I could go to five and seven eighths, which will be closer to that six inch number. I'm gonna start out on the low side and I'm probably just gonna use that. If I, this was a production job and I was trying to make as many parts as I could, I might ease that up to five and seven eighths, but I think we're gonna be fine. I've got it positioned, we got it centered. My first pass is gonna be off the part. I just wanna make sure that we aren't cutting anything on that, that back side, and then we'll index it over and make our first actual cutting pass. We might catch a little bit here. So there we go, we're at 214 RPMs. We got our feed rate set and um, I'm just gonna engage the feed and let it cut down through there. I don't think it's even gonna touch here. It may barely skim. I saw a chip or two come off of there. So we're probably wise in making this first cut. All right, we are all the way across. I'm gonna reverse my feed. We'll use my rapid to come out. I got it in neutral. And now we are going to index our part for the first increment. And we'll make another pass. This one should be cutting. Now I'm cutting a uh, cast iron here with high speed steel. Typically a lubricant is not needed on cast iron with high speed steel. So I'm not gonna use any lubricants or any uh, cutting fluids or anything like that. We should be perfectly fine. Cast iron has a lot of uh, graphite in it and it's more or less self lubricating. Most machinists will tell you they cut cast iron dry. All right, there's our first pass. Again, we're gonna come back out and we will turn our part over 20 holes on this plate which is right there lock our dividing head down and make another pass through there seems to be cutting just fine we probably could go up uh, one speed faster, but we're just gonna leave it like it is. All right, we're through cutting. Index our part. Make another pass. Now, one thing that I'll note here is that uh, with this part that we're cutting, you know, we're only cutting on one side. We're not cutting on the other, or the part will not have the other. But for one of these gears in here, one of these pieces, I actually have it where I have the backside cut to the proper diameter. And we are going to index all the way around to the other side. We're going to cut the teeth on that other side. Um, and just like it was a round gear. And the only reason we're doing that is, is we won't be using that side, but I need to do that so that I can make a measurement. When you measure these gear teeth, you measure across 180 degrees apart. So uh, on one of those blanks, we will be cutting all the way around. And that's strictly to make our measurement. Again, if this was a production job, once we got the first one set, we could just go in here and, and go to town cutting. But that's the reason. And I need to keep everything indexed. So I will index each tooth just like I was cutting it when I'm rotating around. Uh, but we won't actually cut anything on all these blank ones through here. We'll just uh, go 20, 20 places on the dividing head and, uh, and just keep doing that over and over until we get around. Because we're going to have to come back right down the exact same teeth to make our final pass once we uh, get our measurement that we're after. All right, we can probably do one more cut here and then we'll be ready to 
go around to the other side. This one should be the last one, and it's probably only going to be a partial cut. All right, so here we go. We're going to go 20, 20. Getting close. Got a few more turns here. All right, we're getting real close. Uh, let's see if this is going to. That one there is going to be really close. I'm not sure if we need it, but we're going to go ahead and cut it. And uh, that will we'll basically start from there and cut across these. I hear it barely touching that tooth. So let's show you what we're doing here. We're going to measure across two pins. And what I've got are two gauge pins. These are very precise pins. And uh, according to, again, the calculations, the math, it tells you what size pin to use. We need to use a pin that is 70 thousandths of an inch in diameter. So uh, from that, what we want to do is we want to measure directly across from one another. So I've got a second pin that goes in between those uh, gear teeth down on the bottom side. I know you can't see that in the screen, but trust me, I've already figured out which tooth is directly apart from it. And then I bring a micrometer in here and I very carefully measure across these two pins. And based on the diameter, if you're longer using the right diameter pin and based on the depth of cut, we can determine where we are and how much deeper we need to go. Now, my measurement comes out to three inches, 370 thousandths is what we are. The measurement should be three inches, 308 thousandths. So doing my math, basically I subtract those numbers and then divide that in half because we need to take half of it from each side and I basically need to dial in another 31 thousandths uh, depth and we should be right on the money measuring across the pin. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and, and dial that in and we'll make another uh, pass around this part and hopefully be right on the money of where we need to be. So let's bring our table up another 31 thousandths. I'm going to release the lock here and Here we go, 10, 20, 30, one right there. Let me lock my table and there we go. I'll back that off just a touch. Should be right on 31 thou. This should be final depth. Uh, we're gonna make another pass around and we'll check across our wires again and we should be right where we need to be. All right, and away we go. Uh, we are back around the other side. We're ready to make our first cut to our final depth. This first one is probably not going to just barely touch, but uh, we will cut it anyway just in case. Guys, uh, same process as before. We're just going to the final depth here. The nice thing is, is that uh, typically once you get your machine set up, if we were doing a production job and was going to come in here and cut a bunch of these, 
you wouldn't have to make two passes on every one. You would always check your measurements every time, uh, make sure you were in tolerance and make fine adjustments to the height as needed. Uh, but you just kind of have to do it on the first one. After that, you're all right. But since we're only making one, yes, we have to go all the way around twice. And there we go, you can hear it cutting. I'm not gonna make you watch all of these. You see what we're doing. We'll go ahead and cut the next tooth and you can see the final depth of cut uh, between those two teeth compared to the other ones. One thing I will comment on here because I'm sure someone's gonna make a comment about it is, is uh, that you say, well, that cutter's not running true. You can hear it kind of bump, 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 bump as it's cutting around. And guys, I'm just gonna tell you, I've been using horizontal milling machines for the better part of 30 years now. And uh, I don't know that I've ever had a horizontal milling cutter that ran perfectly true between the the bore in the cutter and the, and the, the teeth and the, the anywhere in your machine, the spindle, the outboard bearing, everything else, there's always going to be, you know, where it's, it's not making a perfect circle. Uh, this one is actually cutting pretty good. It's actually cutting all the way around. Uh, but because of the speed and the feed, even that high spot, you're going to have a, a, an even bottom. It's just going to be cutting a little bit more on a couple of those teeth as it's coming around. Uh, like I said, it's virtually impossible to get a cutter to cut perfectly true, but because of your RPMs and your feed rates and everything else, it's just, it's not really going to, it's not going to matter. You're going to have a, for all intent and purposes, it's going to be a flat bottom. True, if we were to get in there and start measuring to the ten thousandths of an inch, you might have a little bit of a waviness down there, or you will have a little bit of waviness down there, but it's not anything to be concerned about. So anyway, we're almost through this, uh, the first half, we'll turn it around the other half, get our measurements, double check everything, and uh, we should be good to go. All right, we got our pins in here again and we're measuring across them just like we did before. And we are measuring, let's see, three inches, 3.3, 3, that's about three, 10 or 15, 10 or 12 rather, 10 or 11. We need to be 308. So we're within two thousandths of our measurement across there. That is within the tolerance. Basically uh, the, the measurement, the perfect measure would be three inch, 320 thousandths, but you want to have a little bit of looseness in there. They call that the backlash allowance. And there's a kind of a tolerance in there. So we're definitely within there. You want to basically have it no more than three inch, 308. We were shooting at three inch, 311. So again, we're within a couple of thousandths of that tolerance. I think we are fine. So uh, we're good. Uh, we're, we've got our gear teeth cut. They are in spec and uh, we should be ready to pull this out. All right, so we have them taken off over here and you can see what we got, the four individual gears. Again, one of them has teeth on both sides, but we're gonna be cutting them all off, um, radiusing that backside. I'm gonna be doing that in another uh, video coming up soon. We also got a drill and these uh, two holes here that will pin. We got to match those up. So that's going to be a little finicky. We'll do all that in another video. But uh, the good news is here is that our gear teeth seem to mesh just fine. I like the profile in there. Everything looks good. I looked at these uh, side by side, looking at the width of the top of the, the teeth. They seem to match up pretty much right on the money. So uh, I feel good about what we got here. I think these are going to work fine. We just need to finish them up. And again, we'll be doing that in an upcoming video. Well, there you go. Uh, some gear cutting over on the Kearney Trekker horizontal milling machine using a dividing head. And uh, we got our gear sectors cut out here. I think we are making good progress. And uh, hopefully soon we'll have these, this project wrapped up. Like I said, one more episode to uh, 
just finish it up and I think we'll be, we'll be ready to go. Guys, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Hit that bell icon to get notifications of new videos coming out. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.